Hello, welcome to the Friday, February 18th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Yesterday I talked about an FBI warning that business email compromise schemes are now migrating in part to conference platforms and we now have a new note about this from Vanan, which is a part of Checkpoint. They observed the distribution of malware in particular via Microsoft Teams. The overall strategy is very similar uh, to uh, this business email compromise. They are compromising one user's account, use that account in order to connect to a company's uh, Microsoft Teams environment. And then they are offering malicious exe files for download. Interesting, uh, the exe file that uh, Vanan here uh, did see is always called usercentric.exe. Of course, uh, nothing would prevent any attacker from using any kind of name for that file. Also, there's absolutely no reason why this attack couldn't happen via Slack, Discord, or any other uh, popular messaging platform. But of course, in particular, the sort of internal corporate messaging platforms are often considered more trusted. So also make sure that you're using strong authentication for your message platform. And just sticking with uh, messaging here, uh, we also have a new version of Thunderbird. I usually don't mention Thunderbird updates, but as anything, you should keep it updated. Uh, Mozilla is pretty good in automatically updating it, just uh, like Firefox and only one high vulnerability is being patched here. CVE 2022-0566 and out of bound right. But well, uh, you may have a secure email gateway in order to protect yourself from attacks like this. Those you have to patch as well. Uh, Cisco addressed the high severity vulnerability in its Cisco secure email appliances. Interestingly, it's actually a vulnerability that's in the Dane component, the DNS-based authentication of named entities. It's sort of a key distribution system via a DNS that could lead to a denial of service against Cisco's async OS software. And of course, a Dane may be triggered without any user interaction based on email, spam, and uh, phishing and malware checks. And hopefully to prevent um, some vulnerabilities, GitHub is expanding its automatic uh, code scanning. Uh, this is mostly at this point a public beta for JavaScript and TypeScript, and it's meant to detect cross-site scripting, path injection, NoSQL injection, and SQL injection. So four big vulnerabilities that are being addressed by this code scanning uses uh, machine learning in order uh, to create uh, some of uh, these rules that are being used to flag potentially vulnerable code. If you're using this for your repositories, let me know how well it works for you. But uh, kind of promising in the sense that there is so much code on GitHub. And uh, even if some of the vulnerabilities are being detected early by a technology like this, it uh, certainly is bound to make a significant uh, difference. This is experimental right now. So you do have to specifically enable this feature for your repository. And remember earlier this week, I mentioned that on Sunday, Adobe released a critical update for the Magento vulnerability CBE 2022-24086. Well, researchers from Positive Technologies now uh, released details about the vulnerability. They say they were able uh, to uh, create an exploit for it and was rather straightforward. Uh, so better patch. Exploits have already been used against some of these Magento installs. They're not as widely publicly available yet, but in particular with the positive technologies announcement, probably this weekend we'll see more of these exploits. So patch today if you haven't already done so. And again, this affects the Magento e-commerce platform. 
And in Storm Cell Diaries today, we have one from Manuel talking about how to do a geolocation lookup in Seek. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.